let's see. Will it work? Yay, it worked. <laughs> okay, good. We're back in here. Um, if it does crash, make sure you do have Discord overlay disabled for Unity. Apparently, it doesn't like it. So, we have our basic canvas here, or sorry, I can actually make camera here. And we have our scene. So, first, we're going to want to save this scene and just call it the game scene. And let's just get set up here, because that's always important when you're making a game. You want to organize your project. So, we're going to create a scenes folder. So, how to create a folder, you just right click, create, and then folder, or you can just create a folder. Actually, I just realized this was a faster way. Uh, and then. We're going to create a scripts folder. Just going to create a few, few folders. Uh, images. Oops. Uh, fonts. Yeah, you, you, we're going to have to move these out because they're not supposed to be on top of each other. Okay. Um, we can create more folders as we go, but first we're going to actually start making the game in its basics. So. All we have is a camera. It does nothing. If we play, as you can see, it's just the blue screen. So we're going to save this. I'm actually going to change the color of my scene to like a more brighter color. One that actually looks nicer than what it did before. We can get a custom background if you want later on. I just don't want one yet. So we'll just set to this nice light blue. Okay, so we're going to save this real quick. We're going to save every action just in case it crashes on us so we're gonna right click anywhere in this box and just create UI and then a canvas so I can see here it's bigger than the camera of course that's how it's supposed to be because the background can go here and all that and particles and all that this is just the canvas for like the buttons and all that because we go to 3d this is basically what a canvas looks like but we don't want to make a idle game in 3d mode unless we're gonna add some particles and all that some other effects okay so first of course we're gonna have to start with a button button uh, let's make this bigger so our site so what this is how my your game should always start out free aspect so what you want to do is click this plus and do this is how most games are do a 1920 by a 1080 and just name it 1080p when you do so, you should create a 1080p, a 720p, and a 144 by 900 I think. I'm not sure if this is right, but you want to create a 900p as well. Because this is what Mac games play on, 900p. I think this is right. might be wrong, but play with this one because this is just safer. Um, I'm, still not, I'm still not good at the anchors and all that, so if I do anything really terrible... Because if you play a free aspect, of course, it zooms in a lot. Because it just stretches. Which is now not how games work. So you want to play at 1080p. So yeah, back to our button. We're going to have to resize this. Um, make sure this is a normal mode, not debug. Because we only need that for animations. And that's just really advanced. And I'm not going to explain get into that this tutorial. So I want to change it to 250 by 100. That's big enough. Uh, oops. Um, make sure it's anchored at center for now. Of course, we're gonna have to move this around. Actually, let's anchor it to the bottom and just move this. There's numerous ways to move this, but for the, at this part, we're just gonna move it down like that. Uh, set it to 200. So right now, it's anchored to the bottom of this canvas right here. And we got some text here too. So we're actually gonna install the font real quick too. Actually, we're gonna do that at the end. So we're going to make this button, uh, this font size, just 50 for now. You can adjust that. And it's anchored to stretch around this box too. If you make it like right here, it will act really funky, especially when you move it. Actually, hold on. It's just really weird later on once you actually build the game. So make sure the text is stretching throughout the box. Because when you stretch this canvas or change the size here, actually I'll show you an example. If I were to change the size of the game to a uh, 720p, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna get back to this tutorial. Anyways, so we're gonna have we have our click button right here, and we're gonna create a text too. Just UI text. 
Also, make sure the text is centered and centered for both of these. It just looks best. And we're gonna have to resize. We're gonna have to resize this. And just change the font size to like 100, maybe. Kind of stretch this a little more. Okay, 1,000 will do for now. Of course, this is not what the game's gonna look like. We have to change this. I'm gonna make the font white too. Of the font color. Okay, so we have our. Um, let's just create a resource here. Like, you know how games, idle games have money, mine has population in the one I'm making, so let's just do a basic of, um, money, I guess. Let's just keep that simple, right off the bat. Okay. So, here, the button absolutely does nothing right now. We're gonna save this again. When you click on it, it does nothing. We gotta program this button to do something. We're gonna go to our script folder, we're gonna create a C-sharp script. Sorry, this is C-sharp uh, tutorial only. I don't really know anything about JavaScript. So we're going to call this one just simple click script. Now, once this loads, we're going to have to delete all of these. But first, well, I'm going to go over what void start void update means. Void start means it calls whatever is going on in here. Like, if you want to make a text uh, start out something so actually let's create some variables here um, first of all we need this to be using unity engine UI this is really important because it actually helps us be able to do public text without this you would have to do public unity engine and then your uh, your money text. This is just a shorter way to do it. It's really easy actually. So make sure you put the using unityengine.ui at the beginning of where all the using is are. Okay, so next we're going to also have our public let's see. We're going to have our button, which is the click button. Okay, so we have our text and our button. So this is the text and this is the button right here. So now when we use void start, let's say we want our money text to say something when we load the game, like when we press play right here. That's what this is for. So what update does, it basically updates like a frame every time. So if you want this text to, we can make it so it goes up like this variable that we're going to create soon by one. That's what update does. See, update is called once per frame. Once this is called, it never goes back. That's how it works. Same with awake, but awake goes first. But awake can also work if this script is disabled, which is kind of handy. Because if you want to reset something, if something buggy happens, then that's what it's for. So anyways, we're going to have the money text money text dot text make sure you have this so it knows it's a text that's trying to change here and we're just gonna change it to dollar sign just to show you that it changes oops and we're gonna have a plus and now we're gonna create a variable public float money pretty self-explanatory and we're gonna create another one called floats mpc which is money per click so we're gonna have the money text dot text which equals money. But we're gonna start off with money equals zero. Once we create a save and a load system, it will automatically we will have to delete this and all that. So now when it starts, it should say dollar sign plus um, it should say zero dollars. So let's just check this out. Okay, so as you see here, it doesn't work. Now, what you have to do before you actually start it, you gotta go to your button, which is your click script, go to click, and there you go, you have your click script. Now, if you press play, it still doesn't work. Why is that? Because we have a null reference error right here. The object reference is not sent to an instant object, which are these two, they're blank. So we gotta add, drag the button to the click button, or you can just click this and press enter, it's really fast. And then the money text, 
has to go to one of these texts. You don't know which one's which. That's why you gotta name these texts. So we're gonna name this one stash. Or you can just uh money. We're just gonna name it money. Or you can just drag it, but I prefer just doing that because it's a little faster. Instead of having to drag across the screen. Now we're gonna set this manually to one. Actually we're just gonna keep it at zero. Okay, so now if we start, it should say zero dollars. But of course, we're going to have to remove this. I don't know why I added that. So now we know that it only ha occurs once. Uh, okay. Now we got to have our... I can delete these for now. These aren't really needed. Um, we're going to skip the update. We're going to actually make our own function called the public void... You can do click, click, whatever you want. Just at least you know what it's called. So, now this is for the button. Now, we're actually going to have a NPC. Oh, I forgot to do this. Sorry if I'm just jumping around like crazy. So, now when it clicks, it doesn't do anything. But we got to make it do something. So, when it clicks, that's what this does. When, it, when you click the button... Right here on click, which is we'll, it will call this function right here, the public void click, and then we gotta since our variable NPC will equal one, we gotta do money plus equals. That means it'll do money equals money plus NPC. Now you may be asking, why can't you just do money plus NPC? That's very wrong. You can't do money plus MC. It's always it's always has to equal something. But if you do equal money MPC, then that's just gonna equal one the entire time. So make sure you're doing the plus equal MPC or else it won't work at all. And then the update. Uh just copy and paste this. We're gonna move this to the update, I guess. Okay, so now as it saves and imports all of our changes, should we shouldn't have to change anything here. So what we're gonna do on the on click, so if we play it without doing anything, it's not gonna do anything. Of course, we gotta add our 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 call. So we're gonna drag this button to the object right here, which is the button itself, and we're gonna click on our click script, and then clicked. It should be really easy to find. Don't make it something really hard to find. Just name it clicked. So now on click it should run or it should call this and it should do the trick. So now let's press play. And now so here you go. If you press click it increases by one. This is the very basics of this game though. So that is done for now. I will do this the, the suffixes of this game later on because that's the hard part. That's that's the annoying part in my opinion. I'm sorry this was a really weird tutorial. Hopefully my next one will be a lot better. And hopefully we'll get more progress the next one. Just keep just be patient. I mean, I'm sorry, Unity and these these two buggy programs are not very uh, happy with me right now. So, anyways, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Like, subscribe, turn on the notifications if you want to continue this series. And I hopefully you guys enjoy, uh, thought this was helpful. And yeah, peace.